In this tutorial, I'm going to be studying decompilation of the old game Capitalism 2. I'm using version 1.03, which was the last official release. I'll assume you know how to program in C, and that you know the basics of assembly programming as well. I'll note that I'm not an expert, just a curious amateur, and if you have any tips on things I could do more easily, I'd like to hear them. So I've loaded CAP2 into IDA Pro 6.1, and it just finished the initial analysis. So this is a clean start. Now there are thousands of functions in here, and so the first question with a big program like this is where to begin, and that depends on what your goal is. If you want to understand a particular piece of code, for instance the code that loads the game, that loads the data from the game database, it's helpful to use the strings view to find it if you can. For instance, I happen to know that the game database file name is 1std.set. Now normally you can type in here to start um, searching for a string by value. However, if you start typing a number, it'll actually jump to that line number, which isn't what we want. So you can sort by string value and scroll there yourself. Now there is no one std that's set in here. So some things you can do are search for for dot set. And you can see this, which there's a good chance it's related. Um, if you want to check the code, you can double click on it and then press X here to find the places where this memory address is referenced. It's only used by one function. So this is probably the code that loads the, dat the game database. Another possibility is to look for one of the tables in the game database. For instance, a firm job table. And this is almost certainly the code which loads the firm jobs out of the database. On the other hand, if you just want to understand the program generally, it's usually best to start in the main function, or in this case, winmain. The reason is that the main function usually has a predictable structure. It initializes all the important data structures, runs the main program code, and everything is reachable from there. This isn't where the program actually starts executing, though. The program actually starts executing at the entry point, which you can find here, jump to entry point. Now, this is somewhere in the standard library, standard C library in this case. And usually this just does some setup, allocates the initial heap, and stuff like that. Eventually it's going to call winmain, somewhere in here I guess. So we really don't need to look in the initial entry point unless you're debugging a program which you think might be doing something tricky before it gets to the main function. For instance, if it's uh, if it was written in assembly and has some code to protect itself from decompilation, from disassembly, then it might be important to actually start understanding the program from the entry point. But in this case, it doesn't try to protect itself, so starting from winmain is fine. This is the beginning of all the user code. Now you can do the analysis in the disassembly view. For parts of programs that were written in assembly, or that are trying to protect themselves from disassembly, this may be necessary. But it's much faster to use the hex trace decompiler if you can, although it's not as flexible as the disassembly view. I'll note that the disassembly view defaults to a graph view that's broken up by basic blocks. But it can be changed to a linear text view if you prefer. Anyway, to begin the decompilation, just place the cursor into somewhere in the function and press F5. Now with a function of this size, it's often best to just scroll through it to get an overview before focusing on any one part. You can It's not easy to understand what's going on immediately because there aren't any good names, data structures are unknown, however you can see the overall flow control is intact. So it's doing something here, um, it's loading some, doing something with the logo, doing a loop, doing, loading another logo, doing another loop, checking something, the, checking the command line against some lobby parameter, so this is probably something related to multiplayer, so maybe this is something related to single player, and somewhere in here it's going to run the main game code 
and uh, deinitialize itself and terminate. Now the fact of the matter is that with a program of this size, there's little hope of being able to reverse engineer the whole thing unless you're amazing at it. A team of programmers spent years writing it and they had the source code available, so unless we can make reverse engineering a group effort, we'll probably have to ignore 80% of the code. The question then becomes, how do we know which areas to focus on and which to ignore? We don't have enough information to get an exact answer, but the general answer is that it, so you want to focus on code that helps you understand the data structures. Once you understand the data structures, the logic usually becomes clear, but if you don't know the data structures, you may be unable to understand even very simple pieces of logic. The database loading code I showed you earlier is a fair place to start because it's sure to fill a lot of important data structures used throughout the game. But let's lay some groundwork first by starting here in WinMain. We'll start at the top. Right away you see something cryptic. Um, it's XORing the address of a local variable with some the value of some global variable. You can double click on the variable or put the cursor here and press enter to see, to see its definition. And it has a weird value. By pressing X you can see where this memory address is referenced and it's used all over the place. You can press escape to go back. To avoid a wild goose chase I'll simply say that this is debug code used for protecting against stack corruption or something like that. You'll see it all over and you can just ignore it. If you look in the disassembly view, you'll see that it's uh, storing, it does the XOR and stores it in this variable. And this variable isn't used anywhere else except at the very end, right before it returns, where it calls this function. And this function does a comparison and potentially reports some kind of GS failure. So I think it's safe to assume that this is some kind of debug code. So back in WinMain, there's one more thing I want to show you before we really get into the decompilation. The decompiled code is frequently wrong when it comes to the arguments of functions that haven't been decompiled yet. For instance, if you look, this appears to take a parameter, whereas if you look, look at it uh, in the decompiled view, I just double clicked on it there, it doesn't take a parameter. When you go back, it's gone. Similarly, this apparently takes one parameter. But when you go in there, you see it takes two. And when you come back, there's a second parameter. So you can't really trust the decompiled code unless you've also stepped into all the functions that it calls. Uh, next, we'll figure out our first data structure, and a very important one at that. 